Well, we will go ahead and get started. We'd like to welcome Patrick Cantley to the interview room here at the Travelers Championship. Patrick, thanks for taking in a few minutes. You're making your eighth start here in the event, coming off top 15s in each of your last four starts here. Um, with that said, just some thoughts on being back. I know obviously in your first start of 2011, round two, a smooth little 60, so obviously a pretty cool place for you to come back to, I would imagine. Yeah, in a tournament, I think, uh, with, that I, with the most starts for me. Uh, mm. I think I turn pro here in uh, 12, and so it's a course I love coming back to and a place I love coming back to, and a course that suits my game as well. I've played well, and uh, I'm looking forward to it this week. Uh, what is it specifically that you, you connect with so well, uh, mentioning the course suiting your game? Yeah, I think it... You know, it rewards driving the ball in the fairway, and um, if you can do that, you can make a lot of birdies around here. Uh, I think it's a it's a good design. It usually uh, holds its own despite being you know a shorter golf course and having some uh, reachable par fives and, and a reachable uh, par four. It's just a fun golf course to play, and I think uh, one of the better ones that we play all year. One last one for me, and then we'll open it up. Coming off top fifteen last week at the U.S. Open, uh, how you feeling coming into the week with the game? Yeah, feeling good about my game. I uh, played well on the weekend. Uh, I was one under on the weekend last week, which uh, was good uh, in those conditions, and hopefully ride some of that momentum this week. Okay. Well, with that, we'll take a few questions. If you would just, you know, the drill, put your hand up, and we'll go for it. Hi, Patrick. Um, could you just take a look back at that round of 60 where you <laughs> broke the course record? Obviously, there are a lot of top young guys that the Travelers invites every year. What does a round like that do for your confidence as a young player? Yeah, it was huge. It was, um, you know, I played the U.S. Open the week before, and so it was my first tour event that wasn't uh, U.S. Open. And so I was really excited about it just because it was so new and exciting. And, um, you know, that day was the uh, – it was Friday, but I played 36 holes. They had a bunch of rain on Thursday. And so um, – it was kind of, kind of good that I got my nerves out of the way, you know, the first 18 holes, um, and I was out there all day and really got in the zone the, the second 18 and kind of went unconscious and everything went my way, made a bunch of putts, and it was uh, one of the most fun rounds of golf I've ever played. Dougie? Just wanted to get your general reaction on on uh, other news today about Brooks and and uh, Abe going to the Live Group. Yeah, um, not unlike some of the you know announcements we've heard the last month. Um, I haven't talked to any of those guys uh, about it, but you know if it makes sense for them and they feel like it's the best um, opportunity for them professionally, then. I, I understand that. Um, you know, everyone has to make their own personal best decision, and um, you know, uh, it's unfortunate not to be able to play against them because I think most everybody in my position wants to play against the best players in the world week in and week out. But it is what it is. <laughs> we'll come back to you. <laughs> Patrick, on, on that on that uh, issue, are, are you concerned about the future of the PGA Tour? What, what what is your level of concern about where it's headed? I think everyone's concerned. Um, like I said, I think everyone really wants to play against the best players in the world, and a lot of us are hyper competitive out here, and that's maybe what drove us to be as good as we are. And so, anytime there's a potential fracture in the sport. I don't think that's good for the sport. Um, and you don't see it in any of the other major sports. In general, all the talent, you know, uh, is on one tour or league. Um, so, yeah, I think it's I think it's definitely a real concern. Oh, yeah. Do you think that the PGA Tour are offering some type of guaranteed money, you know, Obviously, if you don't make the cut, you come away with nothing either at the beginning of the season or the beginning of event. Do you think that that could be beneficial for players on the PGA Tour? Yeah, I definitely think uh, that could be beneficial. I think, you know, right now there's a competition for talent that's going on, and I think you see it in all sorts of other businesses. You've seen it in other professional sports um, from time to time. And, you know... Um, Part of the concern is not knowing what the future is going to be like. 
and right now it's it's an uncertain time for for golf um, but you know if you think about it in the larger business landscape it's a competition for talent and so if the PGA Tour wants to remain the preeminent tour for professional golfers it has to be the best place to play for the best players in the world Joe and then we'll go back to Doug uh, Patrick did you get good vibes off the meeting with the commissioner today and about what you're talk- talking about do you feel better about it than you did yesterday or is it about the same I was not at the meeting I was uh, yeah it was early and I was uh, you know coming off a long week and, and a travel day um, on Monday okay, from what you've heard about it is that what you you know, I, I came straight to the golf course, so I haven't heard much, just some rumblings from some guys, but nothing um, concrete, and I haven't seen any email from the tour or anything with a summary, so um, I don't want to, you know, say something secondhand. Dougie? That was my question, if you would say something secondhand. <laughs> I, I don't honestly don't know if anyone has ever asked you, so I thought I would. Uh, have they made you an offer, and do you have any interest in it? My team handles all that um, kind of stuff, whether it be just uh, any of the sponsors that I have or anything in that department. I haven't had any uh, direct contact with them recently. Um, so I, I, I really, um, you know, I don't, I don't have anything like that outstanding. Okay. Secondly, you, you mentioned competitive a couple of times a minute ago. Um, and, and I kind of wanted to ask you two things. What, why you practice so hard? Is that to be, is that to win, or is that to be the best player in the world? Or, and is that the same thing? Yeah, I think if you win enough, you'll be the best player in the world. And um, I think a really good mindset and a mindset that I've had is try to prepare as best I can to win every golf tournament that I enter, and let the rankings or let the you know, when people say they play for legacy or whatever it is, let that take care of itself. I think, uh, you know, the best thing you can possibly do is prepare as best you can for every tournament that you play and enter with the idea of winning the golf tournament. Rory was asked this um, last week in, in, in some regard. Do you, at least when the initial field was announced, did you get any sense um, that, that guys that were going over were effectively uh, conceding that they can't compete against the best anymore, that there was any sense of surrender. Hmm. Didn't That notion hadn't entered, uh, entered my head. Um, I said it, I think, um, you know, I had a press conference maybe a month or so ago, and I think the, the reasons for different guys going or not going could vary widely. And so to kind of blanket them all into the same decision-making process, I think would be a mistake. I think it's, you know, it's a different decision for everybody to stay or to go, and their reasons may vary greatly. Um, you know, I don't necessarily think that all the guys going over there are saying that they're, they're not, you know, they've conceded trying to be the best player in the world or the best they possibly can be. Um, they may have gone for other reasons. On the varied reasons, would you would you agree that, that money is probably the one common denominator? Definitely. I mean, it, it's a it's a big reason for anybody that's running a business or playing professional sports, and you see it, you know, in golf, and you see it in other sports as well. Can we take finish up? Just moving away from all the crazy news that's happened recently. Uh, uh, just you know, you've played here since you were at your time at UCLA, you know, what does this tournament mean to the PGA Tour? And if you could just comment on, you know, the energy that the fans here in Connecticut bring to this tournament. Yeah, I think this tournament's a big success story. I think that they get a great field um, on, a tough, on a tough week on the schedule. You know, the week after the U.S. Open is probably not a week that you would expect a lot of the best players to play. And um, they've done such a great job with the tournament, with the community supporting it, and uh, with travelers. They do an amazing job this week. It's definitely one of the best tournaments of the year. And um, I think a lot of that started similar to the time when I started playing here. You know, they've redone the clubhouse, and the golf course is always in great shape. So I think it's it's a testament to if you run a really, really good tournament and you care 
deeply about it, you can attract the best players in the world, even if there are some roadblocks in the way. All right, finish up, Doug. Two more quasi-unrelated. <laughs> Stop laughing. Um, of the U.S. Opens you've played, which one did you feel the most energy? The loudest, I guess, is what I'm saying. Well, Do you notice a difference? I was definitely most nervous in my first one at Congressional. I teed off on 10 over the water with tons of people around, and I'd never <laughs> played in anything close to that. Um, so that felt the most electric for me, uh, but probably because I hadn't experienced anything even remotely close to it before. You didn't go to the drop zone, did you? No, I made birdie. Very good. <laughs> um, secondly, I can't imagine, given the timeline of your career, have you ever been to St. Andrews? I have. Um, I went once when I was 12 um, with my grandfather, and then I went and played around um, with the Walker Cup team the week before the Walker Cup in 2011. Aberdeen? Correct. What was the round with your grandfather like? What, was that just a vacation I'm taking it? It was, yeah. Um, my grandma and grandpa took me there for a couple weeks. Um, they were going on a trip there and decided to take me with them. And I got to play uh, six or seven rounds of golf with my grandpa. And it's a memory I, you know, I really cherish because we are uh, we're close and are still close to this day. And we had a lot of fun on that trip and had a lot of laughs uh, traveling uh, across England, Ireland, and Scotland and playing golf and getting lost and, you know, having a good time. What memories do you have of the old course and, and what was, I mean, if you remember the other courses you played, your favorite one of the bunch? I remember the old course being really windy the day we played and, and not having played in wind like that before. And I remember being surprised at how undefined the lines were, uh, getting on a tee and not knowing which direction to go. Most of the golf I had played is very, was very parkland up until that point. And uh, I remember being blown away by Royal County Down, and I haven't been back since. We got a day where it rained sideways for the first nine holes, and then the sun came out for the back nine. And I was, um, you know, shocked at how dramatic the golf course was with the dunes setting in on the sides and uh it's a place i'd like to go back to someday all right well patrick thank you for your time we appreciate it as always yeah thank you thank you